Ooh, it's almost Halloween, and things are getting spookier. But don't be too frightened, even though we're talking about the vampires who terrorized communities here in real life. And those who walk among us today, all pale and moody. Plus, lots of other stuff. Because it's a Halloween special, so you get lots of treats. Shall we begin? Spooky season has been upon us, and I have been in the spooky mood for, like, months, despite the fact that I've been melting in Texas, you know, because it's well, been a thousand degrees out. I have one of those Halloweens this year, because I've spent many Halloweens in Texas, and it's either 95 or 30 with ice. <laughs> So you never know I how mean, it's going to be. <laughs> all those years, all those years that I was in, uh, oh God, that just, I just realized, I was going to say all those years that I was in the costume business when I was working at Lucy in Disguise. This is Austin's first Halloween since Lucy in Disguise closed. Oh my God, is it really? Oh yeah, my because God. remember last year was its last... Oh, fuck. It closed tragic. last year. Yeah. Last year was its last Halloween. That's I still, tragic. I still have not driven down Congress Avenue. I have not driven down to see what's there. Oh, God, I'm so cute. Oh, I bet it's something re- lame. Uh, I mean, it can't be anything as good. I bet it's some yuppie there. bullshit. <laughs> uh, just fuck, fuck whoever moved in. Just yeah, it's some you. yuppie bullshit. Fuck you. You're not. You will never be as cool. I'm sure it's Lucy probably it's probably diamonds. like a vegan tapas bar with non-alcoholic wine or something. You know. <laughs> I mean, whatever. I mean, it's you know, it's fine, whatever. But you know, uh. Because it's been so hot, it's been kind of difficult to, to you know, really do all the preparation that I have been wanting to get, you know, get moving on as early as I wanted to for my annual, the, the getting ready of the yard decor. Yes, because you always go all out. I, I do. I do. Yes. Um you know, I I always say every year I am the Halloween lady of my subdivision. But uh, you know, last year someone else I didn't even place in the subdivision uh, contest. I think it's because when the lady was walking around taking the pictures, I told her not to take the picture yet because I was like barely halfway done putting my oh, shit up. Okay. I'm like, this is not the time. I was like, yeah. this is not the time to take the picture. There's, like, hardly anything up. It's, like, it's the, in the middle of the day. And, you know, it's like, this is... Th- there's not anything to take a picture of yet. Yeah. So come by later. And then I think she just didn't. So she didn't oh, have a picture of my yard. That's the that only bitch. explanation. That bitch. <laughs> that bitch. There, that's the only explanation <laughs> as to how the skeleton pirate party did not win. Because, yes, it should have won. So what are you going to do this year? Because I really don't know. Yeah. This year, um, so, to you know, the my skeletons, ever since um, a couple years ago when I found out that um, you could buy uh, life-size skeletons in bulk from Home Depot, and you still can online. Um, you can so buy a box. You can buy a crate. That makes me laugh, but it does. It's so you know, for people like me... <laughs> You can go online and buy a crate of six skeletons. That's so fabulous. They're significantly cheaper. They're not, they're, you know, the, the quality, it's, 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 you know, 
they're not they're not the same kind of skeletons that you would buy one at a time. Yeah, and they're, yeah, yeah. they they I I don't like their faces as much. Their eyes they do have like red LEDs in their uh, in their eyes that you can light up. Uh-huh. If you want um I don't like their faces as much. Their mouths don't really open. Mm-hmm. Um I mean you can open them but they don't stay open. Like I have to like wire them and like attach a wire like from their teeth and like hook it under their rib or something to hold their mouth open. It's very oh, weird. Oh, really? Their heads don't really turn. Like, they're just, they're... But their arms, like, their wrists and arms rotate, and, like, their arms are way more poseable. Uh-huh. So I don't know oh, why... Oh, so you can make them all vogue. Yeah, like, their their arms are awesome. Like, I don't understand why they have, like, good ball joints in their wrists and elbows and shit and, and shoulders... If their mouths don't even open, like what, what, why, why would you oh. cheap out in certain areas? But anyway, um, but ever now that I have like eight skeletons, oh my god, instead you could of do two, a Madonna theme, and you could have them all voguing. Well, and you no. can have a skeleton Madonna with the cone tits. Every year there will be a theme. <laughs> When I suddenly had eight skeletons, the first thing that happened, this was two years ago, the skeletons had a movie night in the front yard. Mr. and Mrs. Peterson, who were the two skeletons that I've had for a long, long time, they, all of a sudden, they had six friends that I never had before. And they invited those six friends over to watch movies in the front yard. And I hung up a sheet and I projected with my little my little spooky movie projector, which I had another real projector yeah. hidden underneath it, and I was projecting um, skeleton dance, the old iWorks. Yes, um, I remember yes. you did that. Yeah, and it was magnificent. They were all uh, drinking solo cups, drinking red solo cups, and eating candy and dumping popcorn all over the place. That I made popcorn, light up popcorn, <laughs> and that was incredibly successful. And then last year was the pirate party, and they were having sword fights, and one of them was using a sword to cut. Uh, jack-o'-lanterns and uh, you know make a jack-o'-lantern with an eye patch to match his eye patch and it, you know it was all very cute yeah one of them was drunk and passed out and just some legs sticking out from behind the bar very very fun and uh this year the the skeletons are in the cemetery because i have i've always done a cemetery that's mm-hmm. I, and i haven't really i've been sort of using headstones as like ways to hide lights and hide things in these the last couple of years. But this year I'm going full on cemetery. I've actually bought a whole bunch of new headstones. So I have a lot of really cool new headstones this year, uh-huh. but the the skeletons are all hanging out in a cemetery and they are having a picnic. Oh, and fabulous. The uh, the mausoleum in the corner, I built a mausoleum thing that hides this giant electrical box that's in the corner of my yard. Uh-huh. The mausoleum uh, will be uh, where a couple of skeletons have set up a picnic table. like a pic- They've made their picnic table out of the mausoleum where they've thrown a big blanket over the top of it. And they're going to be like setting up picnic crap on top oh, of it. Okay. And I'm going to... Um, they're going to be eating... I'm going to get like pizza boxes some you know between now and then we're going to order pizza at least once and yeah. I'm going to turn the pizza boxes into I'm going to like relabel them and cover them in paper and I'm going to make them like tombstone pizzas ha huh? get oh, it okay. get it get it yeah yeah and um and are you going to have like skeleton rats and stuff for food or are you you know No they no they're just it's just going to be like uh I'm going to have like soda bo- I'm going to make <laughs> I'm going to buy a bottle of uh like a a bottle of Mountain Dew but I'm going to make it Mountain Boo and just okay. you know shit like that you know it's just going to be adorable um and then uh Mr. and Mrs. Peterson are going to be having a romantic uh snuggle of uh, 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 by some um gravestones yeah he's gonna be sitting up she's gonna be laying down with her head in his lap she's gonna be resting her head in his lap oh, okay. she has to lay down because she broke at the waist uh last year oh shit okay yeah she was actually um fully dressed the petersons were fully dressed as the pirate king and queen uh-huh. up on the balcony of the neighbor's house 
uh, next door. We were sharing. They, yeah. My my decorations were spread into both yards because we had cool neighbor. We had cool renters next door last year. Um, but she was actually attached uh, to a chair and her with voluminous skirts, and you couldn't see that she was just an up oh. the up the top half of a skeleton <laughs> that was taped to a chair. Um, so she's going to be laying down, and you won't be able to tell that her waist is not attached. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> but she's going to be reading a book. I think she might be reading um, Skeleton Crew by Stephen King. Oh, okay. Maybe. Um, but they're going to be drinking uh, pink champagne. I'm going to have a, an old vintage, uh, like, ice cooler thing with a oh, bottle cool. of, with an old okay. bottle of pink champagne that came out of my parents' bar. Because I stole a bunch of old, really old, nasty, dusty um, booze out of their bar. Uh, and this really old Andre Andre pink champagne uh, that's probably from the 80s was sitting in there. Anyway, um, so they're going to have a little romantic thing. There's also going to be um, two or three skeletons. Um, no, two skeletons will be uh, roasting marshmallows back towards the back in the dark. I'm going to be making fake fire... Um, out of oh, pool noodles. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be lit up uh, fire uh, yeah. that I'm going to build in an, like an urn, like a planter urn. Uh huh. And uh, I'm going to make like like styrofoam marshmallows on a stick, and they're going to be roasting marshmallows. And there's going to be at least like a, a skeleton like leapfrogging, like horsing around over a, a another uh, headstone. It's oh, just, how cool. That's fabulous. It's uh, it's going to be very, very silly. And I'm thinking maybe that next year's theme might be um, witchy stuff. I'm thinking, like, very, not any kind of realistic, kind of, you know, real witchy stuff, but yeah, like... Yeah. Like slumber party witchy stuff, like like Ouija board and um, light as a feather, stiff as a board kind of things. Oh and, yeah. Um, I don't know. We'll we'll see. Uh, I I I just I had some weird ideas. I I just I saw a picture of like a really cute way to do a cauldron with big plastic balls to be used as the bubbles, and then you just put lights underneath, and then the bubbles all light up oh. in different colors. And I was like, oh, I want to make a big a big fucking cauldron. <laughs> Of course, my husband's going to be like, you want to do what? To just, you know. But Oh, I know, but you know him. He'll go with the flow. Well, you know, the thing about, the thing about my decor, yeah. about my Halloween decor, is that, well, you know, okay, if you don't mind... I'm going to kind of go into my what's bitching with me yeah, okay. right now because it just, this is a good time to say it. So we've been doing some redoing of the downstairs in yeah, the yeah. house yeah. and um, we got rid of the pool table and we got a new, we got like a, we uh, got a real dining room table that we replaced the kitchen table with. And we, you know, we've just been rearranging a lot of furniture and reimagining the front room and what yes, can be done with it. Fabulous. And the back half of the big front room has now become not only a groovy little seating area with pumpkin orange, fabulous uh, groovy swivel chairs. Yes, around which, a coffee you sent me table. The pictures of and they're awesome. By the they're yes, fucking they're awesome. Yes, I'm so jealous. But the wall back there uh, is now filled with cabinetry. The upper half being glass, and it is like display. I'm still working. I'm still working on it, but the purpose of which is to year round be a display for my awesome collection of like kick ass halloween decorations yes and i think that's fabulous because god damn it it's who i am i think that's fabulous 
And it's not, you know, this, this shit is not to be just relegated to hang out in my office, you know, to just be like hidden away. It's to be displayed. My coolest shit is to be displayed year round. See, I think that's fabulous. And just like, do you remember that old ministry song, Halloween is every day? I mean, no, but okay. Oh, you would you would probably look up that song. You would actually it's very eighties. You would actually really love it. I would have to listen to Ministry to know that song, but I oh, will. Oh well, yeah. I will look into it. It makes me think of the worst person alive in the crab dance. <laughs> <laughs> it actually but it's ministry, a good song. Yes. Ministry makes me think of. <clears throat> It actually makes me think of Culture Club because it. Uh, I think the first time, um, the first time I was aware of Culture Club touring in the United States, I think they were touring with Ministry, which is kind oh, of weird. Oh, okay. Well, because Ministry, when they first came out, before they turned all industrial, they were just like a really faggy new wave dance band, which it would be perfect. Like vote or something, which was. When Halloween is Every Day came out. Right. It wasn't okay. until after that that they became all industrial. Right. You know. But anyway. But if you, I guarantee you, seriously though, listen to the song. I guarantee you, you will remember it and you didn't know it was them. Because I guarantee you, you danced to it a million times when we used to go to clubs in the early 90s. Okay. You will recognize that song. And it will be like, that song. Yeah. Will I, will I be adding it to my uh, Halloween playlist that I play in my yard? Uh, you might, because everybody, you'll, you will totally Because I have, song. like, Oingo Boingo and, you know, I, Ooh, I you have, have... What do you have? Would you have Weird Science? Well, I mean, I have, because I, I have a lot of, because um, I have a lot of Danny Elfman because I have a lot of, like, the, um, the soundtrack stuff he's done oh, okay. but because because it's like spooky music for kids but then i also have to put in stuff that's you know i i'm i'm thinking of naming my yard maybe you know and i'm considering like if i was going to if i was going to brand my yard I, uh-huh. i've considered dead man's party Oh, being like, why would I yes. name it anything else? Because it's always going to be the Petersons having a party. Yes. Maybe it's Dead Man's PD. Oh, that sounds like a dick. Yeah, that sounds yeah, like yeah. I'm talking. That sounds, that yeah, sounds like I'm talking that. about that a dick. Like a dirty. You don't want that. <laughs> but I can't wait to see it. I don't know that I'm going to do anything this year. Aww. I've been... The, do the you ever get couple... trick-or-treaters on, on your street? We do, but we shut out the lights. We don't take them. But for the first couple years I was here, I did... I started to buy stuff, and I started to build up stuff. Right. But, you know, I don't remember... If you remember, like, last year at this time was a really bad year. And yeah. there was a lot of not getting along going on. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, fuck it. I did not decorate for Halloween. I didn't decorate for Christmas. Nothing. Right. right. But I had spent a lot of money building, st- you know, buying stuff to build stuff up. Right. So maybe I'll put it out this year. I still haven't decided. I have a little time to decide, but I need to figure out if I'm going to do it or not. As oh, point. yeah. Yeah. But we'll see. I might. And you know, at Target, we now have all the new Halloween stuff. I have not been to Target yet this year. I have not. I was just going to say. I've been looking online. There's, there's... None of it is new. None of it is interesting. Really? It's really disappointing this year. It all sucks. You know that there store. Is nothing interesting. Nothing. You know that store, Home Goods. Yes, you know, I went. I was with. Mm. Wait, was I by myself or was I? No, I was with Sella. Yeah, I think I was with Sella that day. We went to a Home Goods 
and there was, um, they get some of the weirdest shit. I mean, they, they have a lot of the stuff they get, like all the home goods will get the same thing, but every once in a while, one, like they'll get just a handful of stuff and like, they'll just inter like disperse them among just certain stores. There was a thing that I saw it from across the store and it was so huge. I thought it was like a store display. Uh huh. Like the way when you walk, when you're walking towards the back of the Target and you see the, the hide and eek or whatever, and you oh, just yeah. see we that. Have, we have that this year. Yeah, we have the big giant thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, stuff yeah. that's hanging from the ceiling, and I always yeah. would be like, oh, I wish I could just <clears throat> buy that. Yeah. You know, like sometimes those things are cute, and I want to buy just buy one of those things, but it's the store thing. So I saw that this big archway that said Halloween on it. And I was uh-huh. like, what the fuck is, what the fuck is that? And, and I, I went up to it and I was like, oh my God, it's kind of great, but also kind of hideous. Mm. Like it's metal and it's random. Like this is sort of a jack-o'-lantern and it's sort of a bat and it's like rustic and weird angles and kind of ugly. And then oh, the more okay. we looked, and then, and then Sella noticed there was a price tag hanging from it. Uh-huh. And it was a thousand dollars. Oh, fuck. And we were like, how do you even get it out of the store? So, it yeah. was, it was like almost as wide as the room I'm sitting in. I bet somebody bought it. It was as tall as the room I'm sitting in. Yeah. Um, what the fuck? I bet somebody bought it. I mean, I joked that, like, because I took a bunch of pictures of it, and then I went home and I posted it in this Halloween Facebook group yeah. that I'm in, and I was like, I was like, I just have to share this because this is insane. And I and I said, I said, let's just pretend I bought it. Let's just uh-huh. pretend. Who has the storage? Right. I said, I have a hard enough time storing the shit I have. But you could leave it up all the time. You could leave it up That's all That's what I said. I said, the only place I could leave it would be like, I would have to put it like at the end of my driveway. Yes. If you're, the you're, HOA would love it. Oh my God. Your house needs to be an all year fake graveyard. Oh my your God. Your front yard. Wouldn't that be fabulous? But the thing is, it says Halloween. Oh, Why? That's yeah. that's another thing I have. That's a, that's a problem I have with a lot of really cool Halloween decorations. For those of us who see things like that as year-round decorations, yes. Oh, yes. everything doesn't have to say boo on it. Everything Ooh. doesn't have to say happy Halloween on it. Yeah. Please don't write hocus pocus on things. Sometimes it can just be a thing and it can just be nice and we'll just buy it and put it in our homes. You don't have to do all that bullshit with writing on it. We don't need that. You're forcing me to have to repaint your object. (laughs) You know, it's really dumb. But oh my God, the people from the Facebook group. We're like, oh, I want it. And I'm like, you want to pay $1,000 for it? You can have it. I mean, shit. I, I don't know how you're going to get it home. Oh, I, 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 would, I, I bet somebody bought it. Oh, my somebody God. Somebody bought it. But it's just, you know, oh, Facebook groups. Yeah, but I'm thinking, I'm gonna, I want to do something this year. I don't know. What? Because you know, I would be, I was focusing on my theme for Christmas, but I haven't really had a theme for Halloween other than just a few things randomly that I've put out. So maybe this year I yes. Well, you, you still know, have your little witchy, your little lighted witchy night. hats. You have your little yeah, lighted but witchy those hats. go in the backyard. Oh, that's true. I can't hang those in the front yard because I don't know if you remember when you were over here, but the front porch it has those. Those blinds that go right. down so that I can't hang anything big there. And those are too big. I'd have to take the blinds down. Oh, right. 
So those have to go in. The, I mean, they're fabulous in the backyard, but those have to go. Well, in the unless backyard. you just hung them, not along the edge. What if you just hung them across the middle? Could you oh, do I that? Oh, I guess I could hang them from the gutter, from like the storm gutter on the edge of the roof, because they're big. They remember they're like a foot across. No, I know. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to hang them from the gutter. You have to get those little clippies. Oh, I got them for my Christmas. Yeah. In fact, I think the gutter has all the... Maybe I could do, do them out there. Yeah, that's possible. That might be kind of cool. Ooh, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll see about that. That's a good idea. I didn't even think about that. I can hang them from the gutter. It would be and cute. And I'll do something. And, you know, the thing about Mom is, like, I can do whatever I want up there. She doesn't give a fuck as long as I take it down. The only problem with putting stuff out <laughs> front is that then kids will think you're giving away candy. Oh, that's true. So maybe I'll just do it in the backyard. Because, yeah, I don't want, yeah. I, we, I, I do not want people knocking on the door. And I certainly don't want children thinking they're cute because they're not. You know. <laughs> Poor Mr. Amelia. Like, last year was the first, the first and God, possibly only time he actually had to sit out there with me giving away the candy. Oh my God, did he hate it? I mean, it was very stressful for him. It was like he... I could he, see him being very not amused. I mean, he, I mean, he liked seeing the kids and stuff. Yeah. But he was really overwhelmed. He was like... Oh my god, is it always like this? I'm like, yeah, it's fucking always like this. Dude. It's like, I mean, I tell him all the time. I said, I said, dude, there has been years when it's been a thunderstorm and we still have 400 kids. Yeah. Like the rain stops for like 10 minutes and it's a swarm of kids taking advantage of the rain stopped for a minute. Like, there was a year that we just had the, the garage open, and Sella and I sat just inside the door. Just inside the garage. Oh, I remember that. I remember, and yeah, yeah, yeah. We had, we had just enough light on so that people could see where we were, and, like, yeah. the kids would come running up the driveway, and we're like, we're over here, we're over here, so they wouldn't go to the door. We had the, we had the, st the sidewalk blocked. I remember you told, yeah, I remember. And it was just like, no, come over here, come over here. It's like, oh my god, Yeah. We've had. No, I mean, I would love it though. No, if I could put up a sign that said, "Okay, trick or treaters are welcome. No children." <laughs> See, I used to. I used to only like the. Little and then kids I would have nobody. It'd be like you know, hot teenage boys only. <laughs> I with, don't think that's very likely. With their shirts off, you know, and then you can come give me a little you. twirl. It's like I'll give you some candy, little boy. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't life be like Voodoo Academy? I know, That's what like I like say. Snickers. <laughs> God damn it! I've got I've got some some special gummies I can give you, little <laughs> trick or treater. Oh my God! God, we got to be careful nowadays about joking by shit like this too, because. Nobody, you know. nobody gives Wait. drugs to kids. Drugs are too expensive. Uh, yeah. Not in this economy. Right, that's true. You think I'm, you think I'm going to waste my good CBD gummies on some child? <laughs> this Halloween, October pod has the double-double for your toil and trouble. Tune in to October Pod AM wherever you get podcasts on October 24th to hear The Spirit God, a spooktacular new audio drama starring your favorite indie podcasters and written by maniacs. <laughs> then on Halloween Day, visit October Pod Home Video on YouTube, where Edward October will be telling Halloween bedtime stories. A family friendly special that's perfect for getting your children off the night, off to sleep. Yes, it's double the Halloween fright and double the Halloween fun when you listen to October Pod AM's presentation of The Spirit Doll 
on October 24th, wherever you get podcasts. And watch October Pod home videos, bedtime stories for Halloween, narrated by Edward October. Find October Pod on the World Wide Web at OctoberPodVHS.com. October Pod. Retro horror for bold individualists. Pull the strings! <laughs> So you know how I love Facebook drama. Oh yes, and I do too, but I never get to see it because I I'm know, never because, on there, but you do. You, yes. Yeah, because you don't you don't want to be on Facebook enough to to in, get involved in the drama. Well, I I joined a group. I don't know what I was expecting. I really don't. I don't know what I was expecting when I joined a group called Cemetery Enthusiasts. Uh huh. I mean, really, what I wanted, I mean, well, one, cemeteries are cool. And I like, you know, headstone inspiration and cemetery inspiration because I decorate my yard as a cemetery. And I like, you know, I just kind of like getting in that mood by seeing things like that. And also, I just I just think cemeteries are like old cemeteries are really beautiful. Yeah, but well, I mean, I would have joined that group because I love going to cemeteries and walking around and seeing stuff. So I'd have been like, because that's kind of weird. It's kind of weird, right? But so I would have joined that group just because of that. That was your experience. Like, are these people somehow different? Like, I. What does it all mean? I don't. I mean, there there are some people in there who just, like, they might live near a cemetery and they go for walks through it. Like, if they live yeah. near an old cemetery and it's, it, they treat it like a park that they go for, like, that's where they go for walks or whatever. And, oh, and they think it's me. beautiful. Oh, you used to live near a really cool Yes, because remember, okay, where I lived on Bull Creek, yep. right there by the cemetery, remember the Woodrow house was not too far. Right. Me and my ex, we used to ride our we used to ride our bikes up and ride all through the cemetery when we were into bike yeah. riding. That Bull Creek, that one on Bull Creek, and yeah. And I used to, we used to, we rollerbladed through that cemetery. Glamorous. And then when I lived at Bull Creek... I How have sex of you. many times in the middle of the night in that cemetery. Really? I used that cemetery. Oh my god. I love that cemetery. Well, I will tell you, there are some people in the Cemetery Enthusiasts Facebook group that would be very, very horrified to hear that. Because... What, why? Because I had homosexual sex in a cemetery. <laughs> no, because you were being disrespectful to the dead. Oh, honey, because they, don't care. they loved it. Because there are people in that group who, I mean, I, I I bet there are people in there who don't think you should walk on the grass. I mean, I swear to God. Oh God! Oh, they're those. There, okay. There are people who get angry. Okay, like I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read some uh, screenshots that I took from, oh my God. Oh my God. This was just so ridiculous. So there was, there was a, there was a big brouhaha one day Mm -hmm. because, and apparently this, this pops up from time to time, but one day it got really, really snippy where every so often some goth girl will post pictures of herself like, you know, her friend took pictures of her in the cemetery. Oh, okay. And, you know, that's... And she's looking that's all to be ex- and sexy and cool. And she that's to be cool. expected. Okay, yeah. Which that's is fine, which is fabulous, right? I'm probably then, friends with people that would, <laughs> that would do that. Right. But then, but then you get... You take you take that to like the next level where it's like, oh, I'm like some, you know, tattoo model, yeah. goth tattoo model, 
and I did a whole photo spread, a whole photo shoot, and I'm and now I'm posting like twenty pictures from my last photo shoot in the cemetery, and and so people are get will get annoyed. And rather than just be like, oh, there's another photo spread that I'm going to scroll past. Yeah. Like an adult. They're going to make comments and they're going to, and, and then when they, when someone says, Why, what are you so mad about? Yeah. Like, what's your actual reason for saying you shouldn't do that? It's not allowed. It's disrespectful. Oh, please, girl. And then they have to come up with reasons. And then their reasons are things like, well, you should at least, if there should be a rule that if you're going to take a picture next to a headstone, you should at least not make it so that you can't see the name on the headstone. Because if if that is not your family member, then you are you are using someone else's name to... Make money off of them, and then, and it's just like, no one's making any fucking money. I know, and that's stupid anyway, because when you think about it, like, how many, like... It's just some bitch getting her picture taken. Like, Evan Casanovas are they? There's a ton. Who the hell is gonna know who that person is? And it doesn't matter! They're fucking dead. And and they're just doing it because they have a cool headstone. People make... People buy a cool headstone because they want other people to go, look at that cool headstone. Yeah, and I guarantee you, in those graves, there's no, I guarantee you the truth of all of this. There's several nuances. One, old man, he's like, ooh, I like this. I wish I could have had this girl dancing around me when I was alive. Oh, fuck Or yeah. two, old woman. Oh my God, how fabulous. I wish I could have been that free instead of this horrible, stupid life that I led. Or, th- you know, three, gay guy. Oh, girl, do you work it, girl? How fabulous that you're on my grave. You know. You can't lose. All the dead people think it's fabulous. Yeah, it's like, so here's, so here's what happened. So someone, one of the people who run the group decided to put up a poll. And it was like, photo shoots allowed in the cemetery, photo shoots not allowed. Photo shoots with people, but the cemetery is the focus. And th- and then it's like, he, but he was stupid and he didn't make it so that people couldn't continue to add. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, why would you ever make a poll but allow <sighs> people to just add their own things? Like, rather than voting on what you uh, said, people can add their own things. So that's why I have many, many, many things to read. I'm not going to read all of them. Oh, God. But then some bitch goes, no glamour, posing, prom, etc. And then someone adds, stop insulting people who say they don't care for your photos. And then someone says, stop uh, being rude and scroll past what you don't like. And then someone says, why are you trying to seduce the camera while standing on top of a dead person? Please. Uh, And then add a sister site that only allows headstone photos. No people at all. Oh, God. Tasteful photos with people allowed that do not appear sexual. Like, I've never seen a picture that appeared sexual. I don't know what these people are talking about. It's like, just because your dick moved doesn't mean that that person did something sexual. And if they were sexual pictures, like I said, I just said, I guarantee you, the spirits of the dead would love it. Yeah. Because they are no longer caught up in their false Christian beliefs. And my favorite favorite option... My favorite option someone put up on here is, when I die, if goth girls aren't posing on my grave, I have lived for nothing. Amen. But then, on top of that, you also have, and this is, it's like, I commented at one point when people were going off. I said, the thing I don't understand is that I see shit in here every single day that I'm like, wow, I'm not down with that at all. But I'm not going to say what it is because 
anyone who reads this might be like, but that's what I'm here for. Yeah. I said, we are all weirdos who asked to be included in a group called Cemetery Enthusiasts. Yeah, exactly. What kind of fucking weirdos are we? Yeah. We're already Cemetery Enthusiasts. So, what? you know, ob- I, was like, I, I had no idea until I joined this group how many different ways a, a person could be an enthusiast about cemeteries. Oh, so, I like, know. honestly... The first thing I saw that made me go, whoa, did not expect to see this, was an almost constant people posting a picture of, like, the headstone of a dead child and going, rest well, little angel. Oh, please, girl. Or sometimes, and it may or may not be their own child. Like, I have no idea. Oh, Sometimes right. that baby died within the last year. Sometimes yeah. that baby died in 1971. Sometimes it's like, what the fuck? What the fucking fuck? It's I like, mean, yes, very sad, but please, girl, please. You know. And it's like, what? why are we, why are we doing this? What? It's like, do, are we, are we coming here to be sad because people are dead? That's why you're a cemetery enthusiast because people are dead. That seems like a really weird reason to be. Oh, here. I think it's fabulous. I just like the tombstones and I like the mausoleums and I just think it's fabulous. I think it's peaceful and restful, you know. It's just it's so oh my god. And you know, I I don't I don't I and there and there's like there's people who will and argue And the dead don't care. Yeah, the dead really don't care. I mean, there's people who argue. Oh, my favorite is if somebody somebody posted a thing about um, a particular like community cemetery that they were saying. Well, that's not possible that you could that you could just um, bury your own relatives cremains there that's that's not legal you can't do that and they're like um yeah actually at this cemetery you can Mm -hmm. and they're like no no it's not because you can't and they're like that's like i you know that's not true anywhere it's like well no it's true here like it's like how about just accept the fact that you don't know everything and it's just like, and what that's is wrong weird with these people? Thing. Oh, yeah. People, you know, people who get worked up in that. That's why, that is why I hate online and I hate social media and why I don't and involve like, myself I, with it because my blood pressure cannot handle people. And what's because weird is like, I, I am people. learning things about different states' laws. And like, because I, you know, I took... I took a class in college called Sociology of Death, Death and Dying, which I where I learned all sorts of stuff about different laws and things about whether or not you had to be involved. And also, like I, you know, I follow Caitlin Doherty, like the Ask a Mortician account, and you know, and the you know the the Order of the Good Death and stuff, which I highly recommend everyone get into her because she's amazing. And like you know, she's I've learned all these great things about natural cemeteries and places where you can just. A le- you know, they will wrap you in a cotton sheet and just put you in the ground with no box and just allow you to decompose. See, and I think that's fabulous. But I but like there's that. but there are people who like who like they don't even know that exists, and yeah. it's like yeah. and they don't even know that's an option for them. And it and there's there's places that there are places that are like indoor places with these big pods that will literally compost you. Oh, I've seen that too, and I've seen like where they yeah they turn into a tree, and I love it. I think it's fabulous. It's like it's it's absolutely fantastic what people have come up with for like totally green burials and not taking up yeah, space. I, mean, I just want and, to be yeah. cremated, and I want part of my ashes to go to Kerrville. I want part of my ashes to go to the Renaissance Festival. Which Renaissance Festival? TRF. TRF. 
TRF, okay. I want part of my ashes to go somewhere at the Red Lion in San Jose. Oh my God. In the hot tub? You know, oh God, yes. Yes. I mean, I want them scattered to all these places. Oh my God. (laughs) Oh my God. So I guess, I guess if you go and first, it I guess it's going to be up to me. Legal, but, you know, you could, if a pet could go with like a pouch and then you know, they could just be like, you know. Oh, yeah. There's all kinds of, and there's all kinds know. of laws, but, you know, you do the, you do the, you do the Shawshank Redemption thing. You just have a hole in your pocket and you just walk and just sort of shake it down your pants leg. Yeah, and just, a little bit, you know, of, you know ch- 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 here, you know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I promised Stella that if she would if she would pay for the cruise, I would put her ashes in the Panama Canal. Yeah. <laughs> if she would if she would if she would pay for the cruise ticket, that I would take a cruise through the Panama Canal and put a little bit of her in every lock. Yep. Oh no, I went some of my ashes in Russian River. You know. That's a lot of work for someone. Oh, I know. But they could they could just, you know. Carry a little pouch around all the time. Yeah, I mean, I don't. This is never going to happen. But this is like my fantasy, you know. Well, I'm I mean, just really, gonna, I I'm just going to decompose at the body farm at Texas yeah. State University. I'm just going to. I'm just going to, you know, for science. Yeah. You know? Or you could just, you know, dump me in the Russian River where it all began, and that I would be happy with that, you know. Where it all began. That was the beginning of my life. So it was. Going to Russian River, you know. Oh, I thought I thought you were born. In, I thought I thought that's where your birth mom had you. In oh the Russian no River. no no! I meant that was like the beginning of that's the first happy memory. You know what I mean? That's oh, like okay. All, yeah, so it'd be like where my life began. That that'd be fine. I could go, and then we could just go from there. You know. <laughs> you know. But I want a little bit of me spread at the Red Lion. (laughs) I think that sounds reasonable. So, so for those of you who are listening to our podcast, I think it's important for you to know that this segment right here uh, is also has a video component. So you should, after you finish listening to the podcast, you should go look. On places like YouTube. Yes, and you can see our beautiful so you can see, So you can see how cute we are and see how my <laughs> hair, I kind of look like a, like a mad scientist because my hair is so gray <laughs> and so, like, frizzy weird right now. But um, I'm actually really disappointed because the angle of the sun outside, you cannot actually tell that um, I have pride flags in m- the window behind me right now. Which oh yeah, because I would sucks. never know unless I knew. Yeah, if you didn't know, because exactly. it's just like nothing. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just curtain glare. <laughs> yeah, and it sucks because you know this year is is the first year that I've had pride flags. They've been up pretty much the the entire year, and I put them up and I've just been like, "Fuck it, they're staying up," and I'm curious actually how it's going to affect the trick or treaters, you know. How it's going to affect, because I haven't gotten any feedback of any yeah, sort I mean, I, from the I neighborhood. I hope it doesn't matter what Iota, but you know, you do live in rural Texas, so you don't know. I just, <laughs> I never, ever know. I never, ever know, you know, what it's, what it's going to be. I'm hoping that it ends up being just, you know, awesome. But, uh, yeah, so, but the reason, the reason, you guys, why we are being visual at the moment yes. is because something very exciting happened and that is that we got a um we got a dm on uh instagram from our friend benny and he he let us know of the existence of pumpkin spice spam, spam. yes and he wanted us to sample it unfortunately though uh, it was such a limited edition item mm-hmm. that by the time we found out it existed, it was gone and completely unavailable. So, um, 
the only I way to get it. I find one tin of it that I could buy on eBay for eighty four dollars. Yeah, that's uh, that's about ten dollars cheaper than the cheapest one I found when I went looking. Yeah, it's, it's like, are you I fucking was, kidding I'm me? Sorry, I was not gonna spend no, on no. <laughs> I mean, even if we were sharing it, that's not acceptable because no. we were gonna because we are in two different states, and yes. so we have to, you know, we would each have to get a can. So what, but we did discover that there are other sort of seasonal flavors. I had, I really had been unaware that spam had. There's a lot of flavors. I was, I was so unaware. excited when I was online. I want to order them all. I, it's very <laughs> exciting what spam has been doing. So, um, we uh we decided that we're going to sample for your pleasure the maple. maple spam. I mean, y'all can't understand how exciting maple <laughs> is for us. Anything con maple is very very exciting. And you know it's good be though because it's spam. It has to be good. Exactly. Oh, mine is best by uh July 2026. How about yours? Oh, yep, the same. July, yep, Cool. 2026. Now, before I pop mine open, um, I just wanted to share that since we're being visual, I decided uh, to kind of create a little holiday tableau here. I, I have some new, um, really, really cute uh, pumpkin-y oh. uh, dish towels, and um, I'm finally getting to use some a beautiful... Uh, a beautiful plate. Oh, that now, a friend... is it plastic or is it glass? Oh, it's glass. Oh, so I don't have fingernails fancy. at the moment, and I have a little. I have a little friend who wants to join us. I hope. Aww. I hope when the visu- when the video like happens, I hope he doesn't uh, get cut off. But uh, <laughs> but I do. I'm, I'm not going to keep him on the whole time. But I wanted to make sure that uh, Pitney knew he's not the only. He's not the only one. Uh, flaming around here Uh isn't he cute and i'm gonna be dollar general camp style i'm gonna go straight with the fork into the can well i i i brought (laughs) ground i uh i have a fork and a knife i actually i actually couldn't for some reason i couldn't find a regular size fork in my uh vintage the the style that my that i grew up with my vintage uh my vintage uh serving wear so I got the the big serving fork. Oh, to, now did so I could be extra. Or did you collect it? I don't remember. Uh, we never had the serving fork, so I actually collected this. But this oh, is one of the okay. knives from my childhood of this uh, fabulous pattern. So um, yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna set those down, and then uh, we're gonna. Are we ready? I think we are. All right. Oh my god. Oh my oh. god, I'm sure it's fabulous. Okay. I, I'm actually pretty sure I'm going to love this. My husband oh, yeah. thought my husband thought it was gonna be disgusting. Alright, let's just do a smell test first. Okay. Smell it like smells anything? like spam. It's a little smoky. Yeah, it smells like spam. Salty and smoky. It's very nice. I'm just gonna set that right there on the on the I'm sure um, it's good. You know what? I'm just going to kind of make a little slice into the top to give myself a little wedge. And I'm just to pull digging out. in. Well, I'm going to I'm going to dig in too. Yes. I thought I was going to be dainty, but I don't think I am. All right. All right. Are you are you ready to take a bite? All right. Let's see. All right, everybody. You ready? Bon appetit. Fabulous. Eat the ducky Mm. Oh, it's good. It's really good, actually. Mm-hmm. It's... It, yeah. It's not like normal Spam, though. Um, the maple is almost aftertaste. Yeah. What is it reminding oh. me of? It's not very hammy. It's it's almost like... Um, I'm not sure what it is. It's good, though. Yeah, it's good. I'm going to eat this whole can. Not right now. But it's, eventually, um, my husband has informed me that he does not want any. Actually, the maple is an aftertaste. But the initial taste to me is actually a little more salty than regular Spam. I expected it to be a lot sweeter. 
Yeah. Because the maple doesn't... It's, I was expecting it to have a lot of a maple sweetness, and it doesn't. Yeah, it has... A, are you getting it, saltiness? Oh, yeah. But not as salty as regular Spam, though. Yeah, it's totally different than regular. But no, it's good. It's good. It's oh. going to be really, really good, like, cut thin and put in a skillet. And I have a little puppy here next to me that's very intrigued. Oh, yeah. So, uh, my dog is not aware of this at all. So, so he's he is... going to get he's going to get a little. Oh, you! I hope you make sure we get to watch him eat it. Oh, let's see. If is he eating do... off the fork? Yes. Okay, come here. Do you okay. want some Spam? <gasps> do you want some Spam? Oh. I am. Sh that's very okay. exciting. Okay. Hi, Jogster. Okay, can we see him? Okay. I can. He looks very cute. He looks very handsome. Okay, Jogster, you ready? Oh. <laughs> and that's his that. Jogster approves. <laughs> and Jogster he is approves. Going for the can, but he can't Maple count spam. <laughs> okay. Okay, bye. Oh my God! See you later. Bye. Okay. You know, there's a recipe on the back of a, a, a breakfast bowl. Um, oh, I know. It was sweet good. potato, sweet potatoes with this, onion and sweet potatoes like in cubes with this would be so damn good in a skillet with yes, like a I'm fried having, egg I'm on top. More. I'm having I'm, more. Well, you know, I already, mm. I already had my dinner, so you know, I'm, I'm, I'm done. But, but Damn. you know, okay, I, I'm a little sad. That we didn't get to do the pumpkin spice, but um, I'm actually kind of happy that uh, sure. that we got to have this. So, very, very tasty. Maple, and I will let my mom taste maple some spam. when we're done. And I know she's going to hate it. She's going to be like, oh, hit me. that's <laughs> awful. I, <laughs> you <very> know, <laughs> it's, you know, for the holidays, you know. If you wanted to, you know, oh god, imagine it ground up and mixed mixed in with like stuffing for the turkey at, at Thanksgiving. Ooh. It would that be would fantastic. Be it would be so good. Oh my god, you know how I always stuff a pumpkin? And I always do like oh. a little I always do like a little bacon grease in there. I could grind up a little maple sperm in the pumpkin in the pumpkin stuffing. Oh my god, you guys. Cause I always have like the dried cranberries and a little a little chopped up apple. That would be yeah, super good. Little gr Granny Smith apple in there. Oh my god, so good. What you need to do? I want to do peanut butter jelly and spam sandwiches. Just to see, I bet it's good. I will do it. <laughs> it might. It might work. All right. <laughs> sure. I know peanut butter and bacon is good. Ma yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maple bacon. Yeah. The only thing, this is, it's not, it's not, you know what? When I cook the, when I cook this in a skillet, I'm going to, oh my God, I should get some of that, that bourbon-y maple syrup that my dad has. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Or that mapley bourbon bourbon. Do I still yeah. have some of that? I may still have some of that because that's kind of a hard bourbon to drink. It's more now, of a cooking Felix more of a cooking bourbon. Some, or is he too horrified by it? Um he Yeah, when it arrived, uh he was like, <laughs> What is this for? <laughs> I you know he would he would taste it. But, I mean, he's had worse things in his mouth. I will text him. <laughs> I'm going to text him. I'm going to say, you're going to love it. Just eat, shut up and eat it. <laughs> and he'll text me back. I and mean, he'll say, oh, hit me. <laughs> right? I, you know, I've, I, never mind. I'm not going to, I'm not going <laughs> to share personal stories but yes he's he's had worse um okay <laughs> so i don't know if our listeners are familiar with caitlin doherty but uh all 
also known as uh, the Good Death, the fabulous uh, mortician who started the Order of the Good Death, who um, has become quite a fighter for, um, say, like natural burials and human yeah. composting and trying to fight against the the horrors of the the funeral industry and yes. things and trying to make um funerals more affordable and more palatable and more and more and the, the like utter stupidity of the eight thousand dollar coffin Hello. well yeah and trying to get people and trying to get people more involved in the deaths of their loved ones and not you know, because she just really thinks it's such a goddamn shame that um, we've kind of gotten away from, like, preparing the bodies of our loved ones the way we used to and yeah, sitting with yeah. them and whatever. And anyway, on her Ask a Mortician YouTube channel, which if y'all don't follow it, you should at least go check it out because she's magnificent. And she's just adorable. Um... We stumbled upon a video that we thought was a particularly cool thing, not just because it was about vampires, but it was because it was about vampires in America, in like specifically, yeah. <laughs> and how how America, in a way, has sort of you know, as America always does, America sort of leads the way in what vampires have become for the world, you know, at, like what, what the world, what pop culture in the world sees as vampires <laughs> now, <laughs> sexy vampires, all that shit, that's America's doing. At, but it came about through some really weird ways that yeah. <laughs> that's all America's fault. But, uh, so you know, we'll, we'll direct you eventually, you know, through the show notes and whatnot through to that video. But, you know, we did want to kind of talk about the vampire panic in New England oh. a couple, a couple hundred years ago. Those poor, those poor people. <laughs> I mean, it must've been terrible to have, you know, all of your family and friends just dropping dead from tuberculosis one after another and not really understanding what was going on. And just the only thing you could think of is, well, obviously we're being visited in the night by a vampire. By a vampire, of course. Of course. <laughs> I mean, it's not, as she pointed out, it's not that... It's, it's not that much different than the way some people were reacting a couple of years ago to COVID when it was like a new thing that we didn't yeah, really, yeah. it was a new illness we didn't really know about. And people were, it was extremely contagious and people were just dropping dead and, and we didn't really, you know, it was taking entire towns of people or what, you know, it's like, Oh my God, you know, we didn't know. Nobody really knew what to do and everyone was freaked out. And I mean, we weren't going out and digging up, digging up our relatives and burning parts of their bodies and then consuming the ashes and hoping that that was medicine. But it was kind of, you know, you, you, you try to do what you think is going to help, you know, it's, uh, I know we're being and very you know, vague. There's a fine line though, because it's like, any sane, discerning, rational person knows that vampires are fact. Okay. They're rare, but they're fact. So, was, you know, so it's a fair question, though. Was it disease or was it vampires? You know, this was clearly disease because vampires are very rare and they're not going to be that overt. Short of the vampire revolution happening, which hasn't happened yet, but okay, you know, but vampires are fact. Um. Okay. You know. <laughs> okay. But like the idea of 
there was like cer- certain um and it's almost always young women because mm. you know because those are the those are the cases that become sort of romanticized and those are the ones that get that become like well known because those yeah, are the stories yeah. people talk about is oh poor poor Sarah Tillinghast oh poor Mercy Brown I mean if you yeah. have a name like Mercy Brown of course you're going to be <laughs> But that one became famous because she was one of the last ones and because somehow there was press. There was like Providence, Rhode Island press was around and like a local anthropologist wrote a paper on it. And like all of a sudden, and it was like the eight, late 1800s. There was a, it was like late 1700s to late 1800s. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like a really, really long time ago and and like extremely ancient back backwoods craziness but in but like she pointed out when all this was going on with Mercy Brown Henry Ford was creating like his assembly line to figure, build yeah. the earliest cars and it's kind of a modern thing it's not that old and the other thing she pointed out which i thought was quite brilliant was that because um, embalming had become a new, th- a kind of a new thing, and it was like during the Victorian period, and so people had kind of started, you know, people had always been afraid of death, but then they started being afraid of these what an embalmed body is Mm -hmm. because if a dead body decays and decomposes and turns to dust like it's supposed to it's like that feels like a natural that's a natural process and it makes sense if embalming stops that I mean, that's what... I hate embalming. Embalming is so gross. When I took that... It is weird. It It is so dumb. It is weird. Like, I can appreciate the idea of, you know, like, if someone dies in battle and you want to be able to bring them home so you can have a funeral. You know, someone dies far from home and you want to get them home. And you don't want them to rot before they get home or something. Like, I can appreciate that. Just make them cold, though. Just yeah. <laughs> put them on ice. You know, it, there's got to be... Yeah, embalming is so toxic and disgusting and gross because you just... They don't... They don't decompose. And they're, 50 years later, they're going to look pretty much the same. Yeah, it's really weird. It's, it's so really unnatural weird. and wrong, and that's why I'm going to the body farm. But, like, really, that's vampirism, as you pointed out. In a lot of ways, Yeah, you know, Dracula is an embalmer. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and, you know, he's putting... Flu- he's draining the blood of a of his victim and putting something toxic into them that will keep yeah. them alive forever and keep them fresh and keep them keep them looking dewy and youthful forever and even like the way like that mercy brown you know one of the one of the one of the young women who died of consumption in the late 1800s yeah. <laughs> who was her poor father, you know, dug her up and she had been, she happened to die in the winter when the ground was too hard to bury her. So when they buried her a few months after she was dead, she had been in kind of like a keep above ground. And so she had basically been frozen for a while because it was the New England winter. So when they dug her up and she was fresh, they were like, oh, she's a vampire. And it's like, no, she was frozen. She was, there's no, you know, of course she still seems fresh just because she's been, you know, because they don't understand 
how decomposition works and they don't understand all these processes. So they took out her liver and her heart and they burned it on a rock in the uh, in the graveyard yes. near her grave. And then they fed it to their son and whatever. And he died anyway or whatever it was. Or, or was it the daughter? I can't remember. But, yeah. <laughs> but the way they described... Oh, and she had also moved. She was in a slightly different position than the way she was when they buried her. It's like, well, you know, gas is oh, is yeah, created and exp- and exp- you know things. Lots of things happen to a body. Yeah. And yeah, they move. They sit up. They do all kinds. You know, their eyes pop open. They do all kinds of shit. And so yeah, so but but even with that though, they talked about like. You know, her skin being, you know, pale and her lips being red and all these things. And it was very similar to the way, like, Bram Stoker described Lucy in Dracula. Oh, yes. yes. You know, it's like it. Bram Stoker was very inspired by the accounts of how Mercy Brown yeah. <laughs> was when they dug her up and I mean, for, for real, like the, the vampire panic in America was a very big influence on the way he described the women that Dracula (laughs) was going after. And that absolutely led to, you know, vampires being sexy. So, you know, you're welcome, rest of the world. Right. <laughs> Once again, America leads the way. Um, oh, you know what? I do want to say one more thing about Mercy Brown. I did learn a little tidbit. For anyone out there who would find this to be handy information, uh, if you're ever if you're ever traveling around the New England area and you, if you're a, you know, cemetery enthusiast, you know, and you decide to visit uh, Mercy Brown's grave, it is apparently a pokey stop in Pokemon Go. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, Kaz Rowe, who is another account, like Caitlin Goodtodies, who, who uh, that I also follow, a historian a cute little lesbian historian that I love on YouTube. Uh, she did a video about vampires and those vampire hunting kits that are, Mm-mm. that are really, really cool, but utter bullshit. Although I do want to build one. I want to build like a little mini one, like the size of a lunchbox. I just want to build a little one just so I can have it in my cute little cabinet. Oh yeah. It'd be cool. I just want to make one, but, um, yeah, she uh, she was talking about uh, she she was talking about that stuff, and then she took a little side trip over there, and she found out that well, while she was standing there, her friend who was shooting the video uh, and hanging out with her was like was suddenly squealed with glee because she realized that uh, that grave was a pokey stop. Oh my god! So I was, it's just like oh, that takes me back. <laughs> I mean, I never played that game, but God, did I know a lot of friends. I had a lot of friends who were very heavily, heavily into the Pokemon Go. Sarah is obsessed with it. Oh my God. So weird. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. You know, but I wonder about like, so say, you know, I was bitten tonight by the real Lestat. Sure. And... You know, there's going to be a period where I'm lifeless before somehow I come back to life as my new vampire self, right? I mean, I guess I don't really know. The embalming process happens before I come back. Is it going to negate the vampire gift? Oh, like if they. I mean, yeah. Um, I'm assuming it, it, I'm assuming, so like if an embalmer gets you and drains, yeah. drains all that out of you. 
Yeah. I'm and assuming... Then that, that would negate the, the gift of the vampire, wouldn't it? I'm assuming it... It would because they would drain everything else out of you and pump yeah. you full of of their garbage, of their disgusting tinted garbage. Interesting. But then you know, but then you'd have like zombie garbage bags and zombie dumpsters from the vampiric blood that was being disposed of, right? I yeah. mean, I <laughs> I really. I mean, it's not just that it just gets up and, you know, blood walks around. It's like, you know, it's, it, it needs, it needs a host, I would imagine. Oh, we'll have to, we'll have to figure out that. We'll have to do experiments and see how that works. So was Lestat the one that bit, what was her name? Claudia, the little girl. Was he the creep that bit the little girl or was no, it Louie? No, that was Louie. Lestat turned Louie, and then Louie turned Claudia. Now, why would he do that? You know. As I've said before, yeah, I don't yeah, read. Louie turned Claudia. But why would he turn a little girl? I guess it was just the heat of the moment. I don't know, but yeah, he definitely regretted it. Because it's more, creepy you know? and gross. I mean, it's, yeah. creep- it's creepy when it's, you know... Fucking Edward and Bella when, you know, he's 400 years old and she's 16. You know? But it that's creepy enough. But when, you know, when the girl is like 11 yeah, or she or she looks 11, chances, but she's 400 in like some sort of like hunger frenzy. I th- or if I remember right. I don't know. He should have just like killed the, her. He should have just completely drained her and like killed the, her. First, I, I and I think he was in a frenzy because he was trying to resist it. If I remember correctly, I don't know. It's oh been so God. long, and you know I haven't talked to him in years, so I don't know. Yeah, let's talk about that. And I don't know that I even have Louis's cell phone number anymore. I mean, I'm sure it's been changed because I was one of the few people that were allowed to actually have it. You know? sure it's been changed because I was one of the few people that were allowed to actually have it you know you know so yeah um <laughs> so a couple years ago you I'll say confessed I will say confessed rather than just revealed uh that when you were living next door to me because back <laughs> years ago we were on we were on opposite sides of a duplex yeah um that during that period, I had no idea that during that time you were obsessed with Interview with a Vampire and that you were obsessed with that movie and that you would just watch it over and over and over again and cry. And Yeah, I literally, every day when I got off work, the first thing I would do would put that movie on. I just find that <laughs> so... <laughs> So fucking weird. I think I watched it a hundred times, you know? Is it possible that you didn't tell me because you knew I didn't like it? Is it possible? I don't know. I don't remember. Because I you really did that. not ever remember. mention it. You did not ever mention I, it yeah, back I in the day. Yeah, I don't remember. I think I probably not told you on purpose. Yeah, because you so didn't tell me. Anyway, back to your pretend yes. boyfriend. So, was it Louis or Lestat that you were uh, calling out for? So, the, yeah. So Summoning. There was, there was a time, and I'm trying to think it was me, and who was it? Somebody was there with me, and I can't even remember, honestly, who it was. It may have been Candy. I was thinking it might have been Lisa. It may have been Lee. Anyway, somebody, but anyway. Oh, God, how sad. We're just mentioning we had, people who aren't with us we, anymore. We had done this We have thing. so many friends who aren't with us anymore. My God. Yeah, where we, like, like, lit candles, and we were, we tried to get, like, 
the realistat to come and take us and make us vampires. And it was really upsetting because he didn't come. I mean... And I was like, I had like a 50% disbelief, but only 50%. I had a 50% hope that it was real and it was really going to happen. <laughs> out of all the vampires, out of all the literary vampires that there have been, you could, I mean, you could have just called out is it, is it because, do you think it's because you were calling to a specific vampire and perhaps if you had cast a wider net and called out to any vampire in the area? Yeah, because I think it was what I really wanted to do is I wanted to take Lestat's place in Louis's heart and I wanted to become Louis's forever lover. And what if Louis wasn't Brad Pitt. See, then it would be totally irrelevant because Louis is Brad Pitt to me. <laughs> I mean, if they are in fact real, then they Louis wouldn't be in the Brad, movie. But he has to look like Brad Pitt. Well, you know me, I, I, I firmly believe that anything that I like, you know, Interview with the Vampire, Xena, it's not fiction, it's channeled fact. And we have the privilege of seeing these things due to psychic channeling. So if they're, it's not fiction. Like, Xena is not fiction. Interview with the Vampire is not fiction. Anne Rice was not a creative author. She was channeling fact. Okay, well, that's, but it's still, that still doesn't change the fact that those are actors. I know, but, you know, if I wanted him to look like Brad Pitt, then that's what he looks like. But you know there's a TV series right now, and he's being played by somebody completely different. I know, and I haven't watched it yet. I have not watched it, but I want to. <laughs> and there's, I mean, there's some pretty uh, yumminess. There's some yumminess. But, but, I mean, as long as we're talking about real vampires, though... <laughs> I mean, what about all those real vampires? You know, oh, the real Lord ones. Have mercy. You know, the ones, the ones who, the ones who, you know, really like the shriek back and who, who actually, oh. you know. Oh, it's so ridiculous. You know, I've never met. Okay, in <laughs> real life. You know, wear more black clothes I've than I do. People that think that maybe they were psychic vampires or they've experienced psychic vampirism. But I've never met in real life one of those people that really believe that they're like, you know, like a goth blood vampire who in was, real life. Who was that guy? Who was the guy that you met at Kerrville? Who, was it a vampire or a werewolf? Oh, God, that fucker. Oh, shit. I forgot <laughs> about him. Yeah. Was that in the two, the two Weird for the Ranch episode? Where, when did we talk about him? That was a long yeah. time ago. Yeah, oh, God, first season, I think. Oh, my God. Yeah, that may be too far back for anyone oh, to God, go find. Oh, God, I forgot about him. And, you know, and I slept with him, too. I know you did. Of course you did. Oh, my God, that's right. He was convinced that he was a vampire from... Was it Russia? Was it Yugoslavia? Was it Poland? I don't remember. My brain went to Romania, but I could be wrong. And he married this woman because she was of that race, like genealogy, gene you know. Yeah. And because and that way they she could make strong vampire progeny. But because wasn't she was also from you know Russia or Yugoslavia or whatever the fuck it was that but he I... claimed to be from, even though he was just such a rural white trash guy from rural Texas, right? <laughs> but I I thought I thought that he was I thought that he was breeding with 
with a werewolf. I, I thought there was a crossbreeding between oh, vampire God. and werewolf. Oh, my God. And then he was just banging you because it was Kerrville, and I that's what you do. I think something about, oh, my God, he was so crazy. But, yeah, I slept with him. But because, yeah, of no, course, yeah, you that's did. That's right, because he was a vampire. Because, I, I mean, as soon as you said you've never met anyone who's, who thought who really thought they were a vampire, I'm like, well, except for the guy you fucked at Kerrville who was a vampire. I forgot <laughs> about him. <laughs> oh, God, and I, I still have pictures of him. <laughs> oh, no. And it's actually a little scary to look at those pictures of him because I was like, what the fuck was I thinking? I mean, we've both... We both have what the fuck was I thinking people from our yeah, past. Yeah, but I was definitely, I was caught up in the romanticism of it, you know. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, words, it's, yeah. Um, but, yes, yeah, so, but, like, those, those people who actually claim to drink blood, the people who actually, oh, it's you know. So stupid. Oh, I know when they do that thing where they probably, what, they, like, prick each other's necks and probably lap up three drops of blood. And, yeah, because it's so stupid. And it's probably, like, a sex thing. It's probably, like, just... Well, remember... Oh, God, remember the way that... See, and it's, like, remember when, like, Billy Bob Thornton and, like, Angelina Jolie, like, he... She she was so young and he was so old and creepy and like like they had like vials of each other's blood that they would wear on necklaces and oh, they supposedly I do used to that now that you say that yeah and it's like the older I get the more I look back on that kind of shit and I'm just like why is it always some creepy old dude and some young yeah. chick <laughs> always it's always some strung out young girl. With daddy issues. Always. Oh, yeah. And some old guy who's like, yeah, yeah, baby, let's drink each other's blood. You know, I was like, oh, Oh, fuck. it's so stupid. Do you, and do you remember, okay, I thought, I think I mentioned this to you last week in a text. It was not MTV. It was the Sci-Fi Channel. There was a reality series, Mad Mad House. And it mm. was like a vampire, a witch, a voodoo priestess, and some weird vegan hippie S and M guy. I don't remember. Was it like real world, but like yeah? Oh And they had no. made like mundanes come and live with them, <laughs> and then they would get together and and vote off the mundanes if the mundanes couldn't deal with their weirdness, right? But I remember there was this guy named. Don Henry, H E N R I E, Don Henry, who was oh, like basically no. just like an Asian queen. Oh. But he thought he was a vampire with, you know, his long hair and his makeup and his fangs, and he was a vampire. Oh my God. And they would do these things where they would, you know, have a little bit of blood. And, mm, yeah, it was so stupid. Ugh. And apparently, and I looked up Don Henry, and he's still active in the vampire scene. The vampire scene. Yeah, uh, but that reminds me, so, but do you remember, see, I don't know if you ever saw it, there was a documentary, Vampire Secrets. I think it was on A&E. Oh, God. Which I have... A disc of from because I illegally downloaded it, of course, a long time ago. Oh my god! I hope it's still out there somewhere. But oh my god, I have watched that thing so many times in an interview. You know, and it has interviews with all these people that think they're vampires. Oh, I and love there's it. This one guy, Father Sebastian. Ooh, do you think he knows Father Abraham? Oh God! Oh maybe. Do you think he's ever been to Smurfland? You know, <laughs> uh, but of course, you know, he has the long hair and the fangs and of course, right? Of course. Oh my God. Uh, and he's talking about, well, you know, it's very risky for me to do this interview anyway. 
because I had to get special permission from the vampire elders to even appear on camera <laughs> talking about this. And I so bet because his parole officer might can't find out. Tell you because I don't want to get in trouble with the elders. You know. <laughs> oh well, I would think that he has so much power that he could just tell them to go screw. Yeah, and it was oh my <sighs> god. <laughs> So they talk about him, and then and then there's you know Michelle Belanger, <gasps> who talks you know at great length about being a psychic vampire, and the whole subculture of psychic vampirism. Now, what is a psychic vampire, though? A- Apparently, it's, Now, I used you know, to refer to certain people as psychic vampires, but those are the people who just drain my fucking energy. Yeah. But that's probably not what she thinks she is. Yeah, because apparently psychic vampires are people that need other people's psychic energy to live off of. And say, like, you could be on the bus and a hungry psychic vampire would be next to you. And would suck up all your life force and then you would get sick and not feel good because they did it unconsensually so they could survive. So, like, all of a sudden I would feel really run down like I had the flu. But, of course, you know, ethical psychic vampires, it's consensual and they talk about sharing energy and giving energy. (laughs) <laughs> or she could just eat some fucking food. Uh, yeah, it's so Oh, God, do you think weird. she's a breatharian? <laughs> it's so goddamn weird. Do you think she suns her asshole? <laughs> oh, God, maybe. I remember she was a friend of... There was some ghost show. Remember that ghost show that was really famous and the guy that led it was like this really like kind of douchey frat boy? Zach Baggins? Yeah, he <gasps> knew Michelle Belanger. Oh it's like, God, oh, you know, so... my, my friend, Michelle Belanger, blah, 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 blah. Oh, no. I'm so excited. <laughs> and I just remember when I saw that show, I was so obsessed with it because it was all, everybody in it was so stupid and so ridiculous and so funny. And oh listening to, you know, oh her because they said her name. You know, they had her name printed below her right, right. face. And I didn't know that she pronounced it Belanger. Oh, no. And, of course, in my mind, I was just like, who is this Michelle Belanger bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Belanger. So to me, she will always just be Belanger because she's so ridiculous. And I just looked her up. (gasps) She has a bunch of books out. She's still publishing. Oh my God. And she has an entire book out on interviews with real vampires. Oh my God. She has a whole book out about ethically living as a psychic vampire. Oh my God. And she has a house. That she's trying to get protection for as a church. That's a gathering place for psychic vampire practice. Oh my god. Yeah, so Michelle Belanger. (laughs) Who is it going to be called? Belanger Manor? I know. And the thing about (laughs) Belanger... I'm sure if I met her, I would actually probably really like her, and I could see actually me being friends with her. But just seeing her in the context of all this, I'm just like, oh, oh, please, girl, please. Oh, bitch, uh, no. God damn it, no. Uh, yeah, but oh anyway, it's... Her. But but my favorite, though, is Father Sebastian talking about, you know, the vampire elders have given me permission to be on this show, but I can't reveal very much of our secrets. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, yeah. I, I 
want to talk to the vampire elders and see who they are. You know? Exactly. What the fuck are we wasting our time with you for, Father Sebastian? When we can, when we should be talking to the vampire elders. Are the vampire elders in the room with us right now, Father Sebastian? Oh, or do they live listening. in Canada? <laughs> They could be psychically listening to us right now and they're upset because we're being blasphemous. I don't know. <gasps> oh no, we don't want to get, you know? we don't want to upset the, 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 we don't want to upset the vampire elders. Oh no. Oh, whatever will we do? Oh no. <laughs> you know, and I believe in a lot of hokey stuff for real. Um, well, not hokey, but would you would be considered hokey, you know, Woo -woo. based on my, you know, my uh -huh. religious practices and my vegan practices and stuff. But some of that, that shit is just like way too beyond the pale for me to take seriously, you know, way beyond the pale, <laughs> you know? Oh my God. Yeah. God damn it. But I love it. I love that there's people that really believe in it, and I think it's fabulous. But I don't... I'm not convinced that the people that think they're vampires... Like, the psychic vampire thing I can kind of get, right? The energy thing. And, and they can't hurt anybody. I can get that. I can understand that. Um, but the people that really think that they're vampires, like... Where they do that, they and they don't drink a lot of blood. They literally just slit one another, and they have like a lap of blood. They think they say that they believe that they're vampires, but I'm not convinced that they really do believe they're vampires because they're clearly not, and it's clearly not real. I think they just, I think they but just like blood. They? I think they just have a kink, and it's blood play. And I think they, they, they're just, they. They're just weird. I think yeah, that's... Yeah, but I don't think that they really think that they're vampires, even though that maybe they have played that it's role fucking for fandom. so long that it's they It's fucking it's fandom. Real. That's all yes. it is. It's fuck. It's yes. taking fandom to... It's taking... It's like, it's like combining a fandom with a kink and calling it a thing that's what i think that's what i think but i mean who knows it's just so weird it's, it's so like weird. it's like take it's like combining like a religious practice a little bit like making it ritualistic yeah like there's rules like this is how you do it yeah and you know i could because i bet that they you know kind of conscript young people into it like they just find some gothy weirdo in a high school somewhere oh and, totally you know that it's like that's like i mean that's grooming yeah. <laughs> i mean that's that you know they don't need to worry about they and don't need I mean, to worry I about queer that, people they I need to worry about what, fucking I mean, vampires I think it's fine yeah but i don't understand like these documentaries it seems like these people really think they're vampires but my question is, do they really think that? I don't think they do. Do you know what well, I mean? Well, it doesn't it doesn't help that if you're being interviewed by someone who says, I'm doing an I'm doing a documentary about real vampires. So I'd like to talk to you because you're a real vampire, right? Oh, that's true. And yeah, then it's yeah. oh my god, somebody actually wants to talk to me about how I'm a real vampire. They're fi I'm finally being taken seriously. Oh, that's true. So that's even true. if even if they only barely think it, they're gonna they're gonna be a real vampire today, because someone's finally talking to them and taking them seriously. Oh, that's true. And I mean, I guess I can I mean I can understand the vampire lifestyle as like a fashion aesthetic and like a subculture. And it's but hot. do they really believe it? You know what I mean? I mean, I <laughs> I say, do they really believe it about every single person who has a religion? Oh, well, that's true. So, I mean, every, you know, I don't 
because I don't really believe anything. Yeah. So, I, you know, I think some things are interesting, and I, you know, if if I respect that people like, that have people have things that they want to do, and that they feel, you know, gives them grounding and whatever they need, but I don't believe it. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I see it all as the same. So I, I can't really, I can't really judge if someone really thinks they're a vampire or not. That's I don't, true. I don't know how they could do the whole turning someone else into a vampire and all the other, like all the, rules of what a vampire is it's like yeah. well i mean if if they call themselves a vampire then i guess they get to define what a vampire is well that's true and it's kind of fabulous and if it wasn't so aesthetically ugly in 80s i would think it was much more fabulous than it is but it's so aesthetically ugly in 80s you know? <laughs> i mean i you know I, I do I do like the the dark and broody. I I have always been drawn to the dark and broody. So as long as they're as long as they look good doing it, I really I'm okay. <laughs> That's true. Oh God. Anyway. You know, as long as they're pretty, you know, pretty and pale is pretty and pale and dark and broody is always nice for me. You know, and it's going to be funny, like, next year if I go to, you know, that pagan con that I go to every year here in San Jose, isn't it going to be funny? Next year we'll be talking about this and I'll be like, well, guess who's coming over tonight? Michelle. Because you know me and Belanger are going to become, become besties, right? <laughs> oh, I certainly hope so. I oh, can't that be funny? I can't wait until you're just, just, you know... Having a having a hanger with Belanger. Yes, and I'll be like, girl, I'm sorry. I still will not call you Belanger. <laughs> Bitch, you know your name's Belanger. <laughs> you ain't French. <laughs> Thanks for listening. If you enjoy our show, please take a moment to rate and review us wherever you listen. If you send us a screenshot of your review, we'll send you a Bitchin' Boutique sticker. Everyone, Everyone loves stickers! Please subscribe or add us to your favorites wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribers get new episodes first and are also more attractive. Drop us a line anytime at pitneyandamelia at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you! You think I'm you think I'm gonna waste my good C B D gummies on some child? Yeah. <laughs> I got some THC gummies that that were <gasps> left over from when I had, you know, a visitor, you know, somebody yeah. visiting me from Texas. Yeah. But I mean it's legal here. Right. And I you know, and I took one the other night. Oh my god. And you know I'm not used to that. Yeah, you don't like that kind of thing. And I was like, it's a gummy, whatever. Oh my god, that knocked me on my ass. And I was like... Yeah, because you, like, you don't like the THC. Yeah, and I was like, oh wow, it's totally just like smoking, smoking weed. But it's a gummy. And I somehow thought it was going to be different, but it totally was. And I was, I was just in that. God damn it. I'm just going to sit here and stare. And yeah. it was fine, because I was by my, you know, I was in a safe yeah. space, I was at home, but I was like, I thought somehow it was going to be different. It's like, so nope, I'm it's exactly them, what I I'm remember. giving them to Corrine across the street, yep. because I just can't oh my deal god. With it. <laughs> oh my god. Or I'll mail them to you, you can have them. You can't legally mail them to me, wink wink. You can't Oh, that's do that. right, that would be a federal offense. That would it? be, that would be illegal, wink wink, you couldn't <laughs> possibly wink wink. Theater of the mind. We're absolutely Illegal. not actually talking about doing that. <laughs> and scene. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh my god.